Reflections, Chapter 10, Lesson 1, The Articles of Confederation. What to know? What were the weaknesses of the central government under the Articles of Confederation? What were the weaknesses? Describe the shortcomings, the weaknesses, of the Articles of Confederation. Explain why some leaders wanted to change the Articles of Confederation. Vocabulary to study in Quizlet? Commerce, convention, arsenal, people. Daniel Shays, Shays Rebellion, James Madison, Patrick Henry. <clears throat> you are there. It is 1783 and Congress is meeting at Nassau Hall in New Jersey. Your father is there, serving as a delegate. He has written you many happy letters about meeting General Washington and about the treaty ending the war. However, he worries about the future of the new nation. In his last letter, he wrote that Congress must beg the states for money. You wonder how such a weak Congress can run the government. And some trivia. Nassau Hall served as the United States Capitol for five months in 1783. Congress met there from July to November. For instance. Okay, our first heading, shortcomings of the articles. By 1781, the 13 former colonies, now independent states, had approved the Articles of Confederation. Under the Articles, all 13 states formed a confederation known as the United States of America. Each state governed itself, but all were supposed to work together on national issues. However, the shortcomings or weaknesses of the Articles made it difficult for the national government to work effectively. Under the Articles of Confederation, delegates from the states met in a Congress. In order to pass any new law, delegates from at least nine of the 13 states had to approve it. Often, however, not enough delegates were present to vote. Even when enough delegates, even with, even when enough delegates were present, they rarely agreed, since no state wanted to be under the control of the other states. If the delegates approved a law, Congress still did not have the power to enforce it. The Articles limited other powers of the national or central government. For example, Congress had the power to declare war, make treaties, and borrow money, but it could not collect taxes. To cover expenses, such as debts from the war, Congress could ask the states for money, but it could not force the states to pay. The Articles also made Congress depend on the state for the nation's defense. Congress could ask for an army, but the states had to provide the soldiers. How did the Articles of Confederation limit the power of Congress? Nassau Hall was built for the College of New Jersey, now known as Princeton University. George Washington came to Nassau Hall for the student graduation of 1783. Primary sources, state currency, state money. During the 1770s and the 1780s, most states printed their own paper money. 
This led to problems because some states would not accept money from other states. So this is Massachusetts state. How much it was worth, one shilling. Here's the rising sun and this date where it was printed, 1779. Think about this. Why do you think states no longer print their own money? Our next section heading, the Annapolis Convention. The Annapolis Convention. Under the Articles of Confederation, problems developed with commerce or trade in the states. Some goods cost much more in one state than in another. Disagreements over trade created problems because the central government could not control trade among the states. In 1786, some leaders called on the states to hold a convention or important meeting to discuss commerce. The convention was held in Annapolis, Maryland in 1786. Only five states, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Virginia sent delegates to the Annapolis Convention. After much debate, delegates decided that a stronger national government was needed to oversee commerce. This meant changing the Articles of Confederation. To change the Articles, however, all the states had to agree. Dun dun dun! The delegates sent a report to the states and to Congress, suggesting that another convention should meet in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in May 1787, so 11 years after the Declaration was signed. At this convention, representatives from the states would talk not only about commerce, but about how to strengthen the Articles of Confederation. In January 1787, violent events in Massachusetts would demonstrate how little power the central government had under the Articles of Confederation. And we'll talk about this event. More leaders began to think that the Articles would have to be changed if the young nation were to survive. How could commerce problems be solved? Next heading, Shays Rebellion. Here's a violent event we're going to talk about. Massachusetts. Economic problems during the 1780s made life difficult for many people in the United States. Some former soldiers still had not been paid for fighting in the Revolutionary War. Many Americans were poor, yet they had to pay high state taxes. To buy supplies, farmers often had to borrow money and go into debt. Going into debt caused even more problems for those who could not pay for the debts or their taxes. The courts of some states took away their farms or threatened to send those who could not pay to prison. Late in the summer of 1786, poor farmers in Massachusetts protested by refusing to let the courts meet. Armed with pitchforks and guns, the farmers shut down the courthouses and destroyed debt records. So the papers that showed how much money they owed, they destroyed those. These protests, known as Shays' Rebellion, were named for Daniel Shays, who had been a captain in the Continental Army. In January 1787, Shays and his followers threatened to take over a Massachusetts arsenal. An arsenal is a weapons storehouse owned by the central government. Under the Articles of Confederation, there was no national army 
to defend United States property. Because Congress did not have an army to defend the arsenal, the governor of Massachusetts had to send the state militia to stop Shays. As a result of Shays' rebellion, many people began to fear that the government would be unable to prevent other violent protests. This made many leaders again start thinking about how best to strengthen the central government. How did Shays' rebellion show the weakness of the central government? During Shays' rebellion, four of Shays' followers were killed in the attack on the arsenal. Ideas for change. After Shays' rebellion, some people argued that Congress needed more power. James Madison, a Virginia leader, believed that the country needed to replace the Articles of Confederation. Other leaders in the United States, such as George Washington and John Adams, agreed with Madison. They wanted a national government that could keep the country from breaking apart. Washington worried that only a rope of sand was holding the nation together. Others did not agree with this call for a stronger national government. Patrick Henry of Virginia was one of many leaders who wanted to keep the articles as they were. Henry argued that Americans had fought the British because they did not want a powerful government ruling their lives. After Shays' Rebellion, most of the states now agreed to the request of the delegates at the Annapolis Convention to send delegates to a convention in Philadelphia in the spring of 1787. Rhode Island was the only state that refused to send a delegate. Its leaders saw no need to change the Articles of Confederation. They feared a strong national government would threaten the rights of citizens. And here we see John Jay, who served as the Secretary of Foreign Affairs from 1784 to 1790, and he was the first Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, John Jay. Okay, soon leaders on both sides started presenting their views on such political matters by writing letters to newspapers. These letters could then be published for all to read. So what why did James Madison and others want a stronger central government? Summary. Under the Articles of Confederation, the United States had a weak central government. Some leaders called for a convention to review the Articles. The call for a strong national government increased after Shays' Rebellion. And let's look at this text box. Points of view. Leaders disagreed on how strong the national government should be. Richard Henry Lee, a member of Congress, quote, The Confederation is a great and fundamental system of government. No change should be admitted until proved to be necessary. John Jay. The inefficacy, weakness, of our government becomes daily more and more apparent. Our treasury and our credit are in a sad situation. 